Welcome back to the Packet Lab. Today we're going to take a look at a feature that I really, really like, and I think that you will too, and it's the Cisco Configuration Replace feature. Cisco devices keep two copies of configuration in memory. The startup config is stored in NVRAM, which is non-volatile RAM, which is exactly what it sounds like, while the running configuration is uh, stored in just standard RAM. The difference between these two configurations basically comes down to the difference in the type of memory that they are stored on. Non-volatile RAM is exactly that. It doesn't change, it's persistent. So the startup configuration is stored in the NVRAM and that means it survives reloads and uh, power cycles whereas the running configuration is stored in just standard RAM which means when it loses power it loses its ones and zeros and you don't have anything in there. So when a device boots up it loads the startup configuration from NVRAM, copies that into RAM which then becomes a running configuration and as you make changes to the running configuration that changes the RAM when you want to reconcile these then you go ahead and you can use your write, write memory, a copy run start if you will and what that's doing is it's copying the running configuration from RAM to non-volatile RAM so that it's persistent and NVRAM is obviously the startup config. So generally if you make a mistake in your configuration it's pretty easy to back it out provided that you haven't locked yourself out of the router. You just go into configuration mode and you go ahead and alter the running configuration and just undo the damage that you've done. It's easy to do if it's a few changes and you know how to reverse them. But what happens a lot is that you're not the person that's made the changes and you're usually not sure how many changes were made since the device worked normally. So then you have to go in and start backing out maybe multiple changes or back out a change that you don't know which one is the uh, the bad command It's breaking the router. You do a show run and you see thousands of lines of config and basically it's going to be like a single line in an ACL that you're not sure when that was added. And what invariably happens in these types of situations is that the the problem comes to your attention. You didn't create it. You start working on it. You know you got a uh, hard row to hoe and magically monkeys start popping up over your shoulders. Your boss, your coworkers, the project managers and they're, they're starting to ask you questions like, hey what's wrong? How long will this take? Uh, who did this? Blah 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 blah. Just putting roadblocks in the way of you fixing the issue. If you're lucky, the monkey that made the change, and you might be that monkey, did not write the change, did not copy the uh, running config to the startup config. And so you know that the startup config is a quote unquote known good configuration. It's stable, it works. So what you really want to do to fix this quickly is just go ahead and replace the running configuration with the startup configuration. This seems like it should be something that's very easy to do. Instead of doing a copy run start, you just reverse the order and do a copy start run. Unfortunately, that command is not a replacement command. It's a merge command, and we'll take a look at that. And when it does merge, you could end up with a bigger mess on your hands than you did prior to the mess that led you to replacing the running configuration with the startup configuration. So as I just mentioned, copy source URL to running configuration. For the remainder of this video, we're just going to be doing copy start run. Uh, it, it's a merge operation and preserves all the commands from both the source file and the current running configuration. This command does not remove commands from the current running configuration that are not present in the source file, in this case the startup configuration. So you can see where this can be an issue with default commands. So in your startup configuration, say that you have a default command, um, let's say IP domain lookup, uh, that's a default command. And with Cisco routers, if it is a default command, it does not show up in the configuration. In the startup configuration, even though IP domain lookup is enabled, it doesn't show up. Whereas, let's say in the running configuration, somebody has gone in and disabled this explicitly with no IP domain lookup. So because that's not a default, that shows up in the running configuration. So basically, you've got a startup configuration with IP domain lookup not showing up because it's a default and then the running configuration with no IP domain lookup showing up in the configuration because it's not a default. So you would think that you know if you did a copy start run that it would go ahead and implement the IP domain lookup because that's what you want to do. You wanted to replace the running configuration with the startup configuration. Unfortunately it's going to do a merge and because IP domain lookup does not show up in the startup configuration it's going to go ahead and keep that no IP domain lookup that's in the running configuration. And default configuration commands aren't the only way that this falls flat. You can get a mess with access lists. You could have an access list in the startup configuration that has three lines and one that's in the running configuration that has 60 lines and it's going to merge those instead of, you know, 
what you're thinking is going to happen is you're going to revert back to that three lined ACL. You might end up with one that's 63 lines and is completely screwy. Well, luckily for us, the subject of this lesson is the configure replace command. And what that command does, well, it does exactly what it says. Let's hear what Cisco has to say. It removes commands from the current running configuration that are not present in the replacement file and adds commands to the current running configuration that need to be added. Blah, fucking blah, blah, blah. Basically, it does exactly what it says. It replaces the running configuration with the configuration that you specify. The second bullet point describes a, an issue that you may not run into. Basically, the copy start run command applies every command in the source file whether or not the command is already in the current running configuration. And if Cisco is going to admit that there might be a possibility of service outages, then you pretty much want to keep that in mind because they generally are not going to admit that there could be screw ups unless that there's a good chance that there could be. So it says the command is, or I'm sorry, the algorithm is inefficient in some cases can result in service outages. And our good friend configure replace only applies the commands that need to be applied. No existing commands in the current running config are reapplied. Again, that's why they call it config replace. The one possible downside to the configuration replace command is that with copy, and in this case it's not going to be copy start run, copy source URL running config, you can use just a couple of commands. You could do copy um, TFTP with a config that just has a, uh, a different IP address for a um, for an interface. You know, say you want to change fast ethernet 00's interface to some new IP address. You can go ahead and do that and the merge is fine because it's just going to go ahead and overwrite the old IP address. You need to have a complete iOS configuration file when you're using the replace command and that makes sense. You're replacing the entire configuration. You're not merging so you can't really replace it with something that's not complete. So the other option that you have, and this is where the benefit of having two different configuration files comes into play, is that you can reload. Because the startup configuration is stored in non-volatile RAM, it survives power outages, reloads, blah, blah, blah. And your RAM, that is the area where your, your running configuration is stored, does not so it resets that's a safety net it's a I call it a, a hard replace uh, you'll you'll be back to where you're you know where before you started your configuration and uh, hopefully your startup config is a uh, stable working configuration to steal a term from the Microsoft world hopefully it's a known good configuration uh, let me get on my soapbox here if you make a change to the running configuration make sure before you write that change to the startup configuration that it works. So if you go in and change the running configuration, take some time to check it out, make sure it works. Of course, the flip side of that is don't walk away without writing it because again, when it reloads, you'll lose that change. But you want to have that startup configuration be a known good working configuration. Okay, I'll get off my soapbox now. And because that startup configuration generally is a known good working configuration, a lot of engineers I know, before they make any change to the running configuration, will issue the reload in, say, 10 minutes. With the reload command, and there's a video for this as well, you can specify the router to go ahead and reload in X minutes. So what they're doing is they're saying, okay, router, go ahead and reload in 10 minutes. So if they go in and make a change that completely locks them out or does something goofy, all they have to do is wait for 10 minutes, the router will reload, and they'll be back to where they were before they started the configuration. So like I said, that's a great safety net. I call this a hard replace. You'll fix your issue, but you're reloading the router. So, I mean, unless it's the middle of the night and you've got a change control window, you kind of don't want to do that. Because especially if it's production during the business day, you're going to take down the damn router. Now, that's when you start blaming... AT&T or the carrier or whatever to divert attention from your fuck up, but you don't want to do that because of that. And the other reason is that even though Cisco routers are very stable, very good, they're great, I love Cisco routers, whenever you do a reload, you always run the chance of something coming out of nowhere you know, and biting you in the ass. It doesn't reload right, the um, flash gets screwed up, so you can make a problem that much worse. You might have a dead box on your hands, so try and reload as infrequently as possible.